it's nurse Mimi. We're going to give you guys like about 30 or 60 seconds to all get in here. I'm so glad you guys could join us today on how to be successful in not only nursing school, but how to be successful on the NCLEX and pass it on your first try. It's so exciting. Okay. Oh my gosh, 15. A lot of you are logging on. It's so exciting. Okay. So a couple of things that I want to tell you guys. I love questions. So the chat box is open. There's a chat widget in kind of the lower right-hand corner. I will do questions and answers at the end. So feel free, type in your questions and answers at the end. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. You do wanna to stay to the end because we are giving away a one year subscription to pick Monic, but make sure you stay to the end in order to get that. Um, and then we also have a special discount from PicMonic as well. This webinar will be recorded. It will be available on YouTube tomorrow and PicMonic will email the link as well to your email that you signed up with. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about me. I've been in nursing since I was 16 years old. Um, so I started out volunteering with my mother, who's a retired nurse, and I became a STNA, so a nursing assistant, and then I quickly went on to nursing school and got my associates, and then I got married, and I ended up working on a military base for a long time, and I worked in med surge, in ER, in ICU, and then I, get, I did RN to BSN, and then I ended up going back and getting my master's. And then I'm working on getting my perf actual title of professor. And so I've taught everything from med surge to fundamentals to pharmacology. And I work with NATSEP students, so uh, the nurse aid training competency and evaluation program, to also students that are working on the T's and the HESI prep. And I also work with NCLEX students that are trying to take the NCLEX. So I pretty much work with a lot of students across the board, nursing students. Okay, so how I actually discovered PICMONIC was actually from one of my nursing students. Um, so it was kind of really weird. They were like, hey, have you ever heard of PICMONIC? Is it any good? And I was like, hmm, no. And they're like, well, we think you really would like it because you're in psych and behavioral health which is pretty much my niche, my uh, specialty in nursing. And I'm like, interesting, why is that? And they're like, well, because it really helps you with memory. So I got on there and I started playing with it. And the way PicMonic works is it actually stimulates your hippocampus and it gives you, you know, creative pictures and a story, which then helps you apply it um, to whatever it is you're learning, that content that you're learning. So then I loved it myself and I started incorporating it into what I was teaching. So now I use it with my students. And I also used it in my uh, study in as well. So, hey, it works. And we know that it works because the evidence-based practice, the independent research there on PicMonic's website says that students did 331% better on their tests. So, hey, we know it works. Okay. Let's get into how to be successful in both nursing school and how to be successful on the NCLEX, okay? Number one, you have got to be organized for both nursing school and the NCLEX. You have to be organized. So most of my students know I'm a little type A, okay? So I have, you know, colored post-it notes. Yeah, like Amazon drops these off by the bulk. I have colored pens, right, and colored highlighters. Now, here's a really good tip that I used in nursing school. Colored highlighters, different colors. You want to use one color for what you already know, right? A different color for what your instructor said you needed to know, 
big hint, <laughs> that's gonna be tested over. And another color for what you need to review later, meaning I don't know that, okay? So when you go back to study, you definitely wanna study the one color that your professor said, hey, that's gonna be on the test. You definitely need to review the stuff you did not understand. But the stuff you already know, just skim over that stuff. Why keep studying the stuff you already know? The other thing is make sure you are looking at your course outline and you're on top of those deadlines. So write all of those down day one for every single class in a planner. You need to study in a quiet, dedicated space. Don't be studying in your bed because that's when you fall asleep. So at the point that you're falling asleep, you're not doing your brain any good. Go to bed. You're actually just crammy, okay? You'd be better off to go get some sleep and pick it up the next day. Remove your distractions, so your cell phones, iPads, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, turn those off too. You need to study in 30 minute to one hour increments, no longer. Your brain is not developed to sit there and cram, 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 cram for hours and hours and hours and hours. It's just not made to do that. So for every hour of studying, you need to take a 15 to 20 minute break. I didn't say hour long break. I said 15 to 20 minute break, okay? All right, you need to study smarter, not harder. So what I mean by that is stay ahead of the game. You need to read in the material beforehand Watch pick monics that will cover the topics beforehand. So you, what you wanna do is watch the pick monic and then listen to the story, it'll give you a story, and then take the quiz and then attend the lectures, which is real nice. So here's the thing, your brain does not do well with cramming. It's like a filing cabinet, okay? So you cannot cram lar large amounts of information the night before a test. That would be like jamming all of your office files together, right? So then you get to the test and you're like, hmm, I don't know if that was Langerhand or another L, Lisinopril. Langerhand's left on ah, because guess what? You just stuffed all everything in that L file. You remember reading both Lisinopril and Langerhands, but now guess what? They're all jammed in there. You can't do that, okay? This is why cramming doesn't work in nursing school. You find out real quick. And it doesn't work for the NCLEX either. Okay, that's why you need to block time to study daily. Have you ever noticed nursing students and NCLEXers carry their books everywhere? And I do mean everywhere. They always have their books with them, right? That's why we have really good bicep <laughs> in nursing school. It's because we're constantly studying, right? This is all new material. This isn't like English where you took, you know, you started English, what, in kindergarten and you kept right on going, right, through high school. This is new material, anatomy, biology, pharmacology, right? So new material is easier to master as you learn it. So we study every day, even if it's just 20 minutes of Picmonic or 10 to 20 questions in a Q bank, or even just your medication flashcards. So you guys got cell phones. I know I told you to put your cell phones away earlier, but if you're using them as a good study resource, and yes, Picmonic does have an app, it is nice. Um, use it, you have your cell phones, use those study resources that you have. Now, 
about the NCLEX. So those of you joining me for the NCLEX, I know there's quite a few of you here. It is really, really, really bad and terribly ineffective to wait until after graduation and then you have to cram for your NCLEX. Now I know you're really, really busy in nursing school. Been there, done that. But you cannot cram for your NCLEX. On average, most students need four to six weeks leading up to their NCLEX to really adequately study and prepare for it. And I'm gonna be honest, nursing school doesn't exactly prepare you the best for the NCLEX, okay? So Picmonic actually made a really great book. I have it right here, Four Weeks to the NCLEX. This is great, guys. It's got a great study resource. Checklist tells you exactly what to do. There are other great resources too out there um, that will lead you up to the NCLEX. But I wanna talk about the difference between nursing school questions and the NCLEX. What is the difference? The difference between nursing school and the NCLEX is this. In nursing school, nursing school tests you on everything because nursing school is giving you the foundation of knowledge. The NCLEX, however, is testing you on safety and competency. And that's where you get those famous NCLEX priority and best questions that they're notorious for. And yes, there is a difference between priority and best. So right here, you guys taking the NCLEX here soon, listen up, this one's for you, okay? The difference between priority and best, I wanna address this right now, is this. When you, hear, when you see the word priority, I want you to think, what do I do first? What do I do first, okay? Which you should be doing the nursing process at that point, correct? We have a nursing process. Yeah, you better go back and review fundamentals. You can't forget that. Those of you getting ready to take the NCLEX, you best be reviewing ADPI, Maslow, and your ABCs. They're expecting you to know that and how to apply it. When you see the word best, that is not the same thing. It is asking you for this particular situation, what would give us the best outcome for this patient, okay? So for example, you see a systole on a monitor, right? Priority, go check the leads, assess the patient, right? Add pie, assess, right? A lead could be off. Best, a systole, no cardiac output, you best be starting some CPR. They're not the same answer, okay? So you kind of go into hero mode when you think about best. So this is a new way of thinking for you, okay? So you're gonna have to start exercising this. You're gonna have to do some cue banks. You're gonna have to start creating what we call muscle memory in that hippocampus and in your brain. So you're gonna have to add a regular cue brink of practice to your study routine. And that's why you hear everybody talking about cue banks. You've got to do practicing. Reviewing the content is great, but you've got to apply it on the NCLEX. Okay, there's many free resources out there too, like nurse labs, there's a ton of them that can help you with these NCLEX style questions and help you prepare. Now, remember this as well. It's not about the quantity, but the quality. So before you type in that, you know, Q&A box and you ask me, how many questions do we do a day? Don't ask me that question because you're gonna get this answer. It's not about the quantity but the quality of the questions you're doing. You cannot just click through an infinite number of questions. I've heard 200, 300, 400, 500 people doing a thousand questions a day. You need to actually read your rationales and understand the content and how to apply it when you're looking at NCLEX style questions and where you went wrong. So I would rather you do 25, 50, 
broken up and really spend time with those questions and understanding how to apply that content and where you're going wrong. Don't be just clicking through them. That's not quality of questions. Okay, you need to ask questions and a lot of questions. So those of you in nursing school, don't be afraid to reach out and ask help if you need help. Those of you studying for the NCLEX, same goes to you. If you're working already, go talk to the nurses that just took the NCLEX. They will help you. Get a tutor. Don't wait, okay? So you're gonna have to ask patients questions every day. It's part of your assessment. Gather background information. So you better get in the habit of talking now. Remember your professors and instructors, they have open office times. Take advantage of that. A lot of times I'm just sitting there in open office doing lesson plans. Very rarely does a student come in. You can review tests, right? They can pull and review tests with you. They can help a lot. Take advantage of that time. And don't wait till you're borderline. You guys know what I mean. Like you're on the fence, you're getting ready to fail. Don't do that. You know when you're, you're starting to struggle. Get help before you're on the fence. And don't forget to try out tutoring if you need it. There's some really great competent nursing tutors out there on platforms like Wisent, Varsity Tutors, or Tutor.com. Here is a big one. Don't forget to practice self-care. Kind of learned this the hard way <laughs> in nursing school, right? when you don't get any sleep and you're working full time, right? Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, three twelves, and then going to school full time. You need to take care of yourself. You need sleep. Your body needs sleep. So it's really important. You need breaks and that includes study breaks. So take care of yourself and learn how to take care of yourself and learn how to de-stress and learn that in nursing school right now. Okay. Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? Yes, okay. So go ahead and put your questions in the question box. When, okay, here's one. Benedicta Barnes said, when you read the rationales, do you read all the rationales or just the one? Oh, okay, this is a good, good question. Okay, um, thank you, Benedicta. Okay, so yes, um, if you know the answer and you got it correct, now don't lie to yourself, all right? You know the questions that you guessed on, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was a good guess, educated guess, but you really didn't know that content, okay? You know what I'm talking about. You really didn't know it, it was a good guess though. You know what I mean? You stretched. Um, you still need to read that content. You still need to read that rationale because you didn't know, it. you know what I mean? Like flag that one. If you get it incorrect, you absolutely need to read that rationale. Absolutely 100%. If you know it, you know it, keep on moving. Just like that colored highlighter, right? If you know it, you know it, keep on moving, right? Yeah, nope, you know it. Don't review the stuff you already know. Review the stuff you don't know, okay? The NCLEX does not test everything. This isn't nursing school. It does bare minimum competency. It's not testing everything. And the NCLEX is not trying to, to like trick you. I know people are saying the NCLEX is trying to trick me. No, it's not. It is not, I promise. Okay, uh, can you repeat the tutoring websites? Yes, uh, Wisent, so I'm on Wisent. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, there's Varsity Tutors, there's tutor.com as well. Those are a couple, and that Frog Tutoring is another one. So Wisent. Tutor.com, Varsity Tutors, and Frog.
Any other questions? that we have. Okay. Uh, Catherine just asked, is there a picmonic for donning and doffing PPE? Yes, there is. There's a picmonic for all of your transmission-based precautions. Yes and medical and surgical asepsis. Yes, there is. Okay, Monica has everything, guys. It is amazing. It truly is. I'm, and I would not just be saying that, I promise. It is amazing. It truly is. Or I wouldn't be using that. And I have tried all of the resources um, because I have access to them as an instructor. I'm not gonna name them here, but when I say I've tried them all, I have tried them all across the board. Um, so it's under transmission-based precautions and medical and surgical asepsis. Um, how do you spell it? W-Y-Z-A-N-T, Wyzant. Okay, we got a winner for the one year subscription to Picmonic. The winner is Kelly Thornton. Kelly Thornton. Somebody from Picmonic or the Picmonic team is going to reach out to you. They will email you. The rest of you, you guys are able to get 30% off. Normally it's only 20% off if you use my link for Picmonic, but now it's 30% off for the next 24 hours. Uh, that link will be available to you. Uh, so if you guys want to sign up for Picmonic, you can. It's so helpful for the pre-nursing students if you're taking the T's or the HESI, especially the medical terminology, microbiology, and A&P section, and the nursing um, students and the UNCLEXers. There's a Picmonic playlist that goes along with this book. And this book is awesome, by the way. Uh, one more question. What is my recommendation for someone who hates reading? Oh my gosh. I can't believe you just asked this actually. So I hate reading. <laughs> I do. <laughs> the students ask me all the time, do you read the entire textbook? You know, because you're supposed to read the textbook before you teach it. No. Do you know what I do? I'm just being honest. I don't. I, I just don't. There is an app, it is called Speechify, okay? Speechify, so S-P-E-E-C-H-I-F-Y. I just downloaded it last night, my husband told me about it. And you take a screenshot, a picture of your phone, of your textbook, and it will read it to you. I have Gwyneth Paltrow as my voice, she is reading me my textbooks. Mm -hmm. I know, I feel like I'm in, you know, like in Shakespeare in Love or something. Isn't that nice? All right, guys. Um, the playlist is under Picmonic's uh, website. There's also playlists under uh, my username as well on Picmonic. Any other questions? Is that it? One more question. Okay. All right. All right, we're gonna. Okay, I do have one more question. I am gonna answer this about this virtual thing. Just because, because of COVID, we do a lot of things with virtual. Um, I know it's been rough. Uh, with COVID, we've done a lot of things virtually. Um, so virtual classes, 
and virtual clinicals, they're not fun, are they? Um, so when you do your virtual clinicals, um, when they give you that scenario of, the, of your patient, right, or your client, if you're doing site, read that very, very carefully because there's clues in there. Their background, their medicine. Make sure you're writing little notes off to the side, like on a post-it about their medications and their background because usually the questions they're getting ready to ask you on the next screen, right, has to do with that background information that was on that MAR or whatever they asked you. And you don't have to keep flipping back and forth between the screens all the time. So yeah, make sure you're reading that background information about that patient on the virtual clinical simulator that you're on. Okay, guys. Thank you guys for coming. It was a pleasure.